upon Solomon chapter 2. And uh, we'll look at the scripture tonight. The Lord been dealing with me about this all week. Song of Solomon chapter number 2. The song of Solomon. The great son of David who wrote all them proverbs and great wonderful things. And uh, we'll mention that tonight. Now this is called the song of song. In that, uh, to introduce the message tonight, one of the most unusual, strange, un, un, uh, I, I guess you wouldn't normally, a person wouldn't include it as a biblical book in the Bible, but God did, and He done it for a reason, is the book of Song of Solomon. Written 1000 BC, eight chapters, 117 verses, 2,661 verses. Words. Solomon wrote this book, as I said, about a thousand BC, and it's a song of, of, of a, like a lyrics to a song, and it's a love song between a, a man and a woman, and it's um, love uh, not at, at a physical and a spiritual level, and is mentally uh, suggestive in some of the language. That's used in the book of Song of Solomon. But it is pure and clean. So this is the love of a man and a woman. Not contaminated by the filth of Hollywood. And the wickedness of the way the world looks at it. And that's why a lot of people uh, uh, shrug from the Song of Solomon. Oh, they say, oh that's dirty. No, no, there's nothing impure. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing vulgar or coarse in the book of Song of Solomon. It's a natural love. Picturing the king and the Shunammite woman. Picturing Jesus Christ and the church. So love between a man and a woman in context in marriage is pure. And the Bible said marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But any of that other stuff, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So uh, my subject tonight will be taken out of a verse here. None of these verses are demeaning. Uh, it's a picture of Christ the church and sometimes called cant, C-A-N-T canticles, that means song and uh, look at uh, chapter 2 and verse number 1, he talked about the rose of Sharon the lily of the valley, lily among the thorns so is my love among the, among the daughter and it's a man, his love for his bride his, uh, uh, his, his white picture of Jesus and the church but I, I'm not going to preach about that tonight, I want to pull a verse out of here and look at it, verse 6, uh, 15. Verse 15. Take us, the Bible said, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. For our vines have tender grapes. That's a strange verse to be stuck right there in this chapter. And my subject tonight deals with these little foxes. I'm going to preach about the little foxes tonight that the Bible said spoil the vine. Now, a fox is a small uh, little animal. It looks like a dog. It's a lot littler than you think it is. A uh, little thing. They're, they're red. They're, they're gray in this part of the country. But there are foxes that are white, uh, almost black, different shades. And a fox in the Bible and through history is a picture of, of somebody that is sly, cunning, uh, uh, sneaky, subtle. They're nocturnal. That means they just run around at night time mostly. I, I found one. Sometimes when I'm going home. I don't know if I've ever seen one down here, but that part where we live in Nebo, sometimes I'll be coming down the he Stacey Hill near where I live, and all of a sudden you just see a red thing just shoot. I, I mean, you can't even see it. It's a fast. Shoot. And that's a red fox. Daddy, that's some of daddy's buddies. They all used to go fox hunt. They have fox dog, uh, they, and, they, and a fox uh, is used a bunch of times in the Bible. It was a fox in Judges 15 that Samson got out and tied their tails together. Man, that, that's one of the wildest stories I've ever heard in my life. I, but honest to goodness, I, he'd have been in jail for animal cruelty nowadays, but he put these firebrands on them, like took up fireworks of 300 foxes and set them on fire and let them in the Philistines' yard. That would have been so funny to look at. Uh, I, I, uh, and, uh, 
Uh, that's right. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Things different back then. Uh, it was Jesus in Luke chapter 15 that when he's talking about Herod, the ruler, and Jesus said, you go tell that what? Fox. Jesus called Herod a fox. Now, sometimes a woman nowadays is called a fox. And the re a woman called a fox now that sneaky, seductive, clever, and knows how to uh, use, she, she knows how to mess men up. And, uh, and she's called fox. And foxy, like, just like that. And she's full of the devil, what she is, really. And, uh, and in Matthew uh, 8, Jesus said this about one. He said, foxes have holes. They live in holes. Birds of the air have nets. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Now, back in these days, and still today, they had vineyards. And they had vineyard like grapevine. I don't know how many of y'all had growing up or around somebody who had a grape vineyard. And very common. And the vine, they, they put them up on these sticks and stuff. And the vines get real heavy, and they're just loaded with grapes. Now, grapes is not a fox's favorite food. They'll eat them, but they say sometimes actually they make them sick, but they like them because they're easy to get and can't find nothing else. They actually like meat more, but they, they'll, they'll take, take grapes. And I got to studying, and I said, wonder why he said, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. And one writer said that. What would happen is these big foxes would come and fox. What's the plural fox? Foxes. Uh, fox with a plus and an S on the end of it. But anyway, a uh, bunch of them. And they, they'd come and they would go over the fence and just eat the grapes and be gone. The little foxes would have to dig, make a mess, and go under the fence. And then they couldn't reach the grapes. And they just tear the vine all of it. And the Bible said they little foxes spoil the vines. They did not just eat the grapes. They spoil the vines. Now tonight, that's, that's, my, that's my thought. Take us the foxes, the little foxes. I'm going to preach about little sins in our life. And everybody, if you've been going to church any time at all, you know that little sins, Left unchecked lead to what? Bigger sin. Um, of course they do. I mean, that's all. Everybody knows that. You let a little sin stay in your life and not deal with it because you're proud of yourself for getting all rid of that big stuff. And that little sin will lead to a bigger sin. And eventually it will spoil the vineyard of your heart and in your life. I heard about a man uh, not long ago, got called home. He's a preacher, actually. And he saw and said, uh, he had that much water in his house, ruined all the, uh, the floors, ruined his laminate floor and hardwood floor and carpet and everything, just literally. And the sheetrock, just about everything in the house had to be replaced. And the water was that deep. And they got the truck. It wasn't a flood. It wasn't a big, gigantic hurricane, tornado like they had down yonder. Blue Hickory the other day and all that flooding we had here. It wasn't that. They said they got to look underneath the house. There's one nail had got rusty and come loose, fell out, and it broke a pipe, and just a little leak started leaking out of there, and then it gushed out and ruined that guy's house. Tens of thousands and thousands of dollars. Just that one little tiny leak. I heard about a man over in Knoxville, Tennessee, one day, who, who, who pulled a hair out of his nose. It was growing. You know, when you get older, you start having one... You get more hair in your nose than you do through your head. You know, you get old. And uh, out of your ears and everything. Uh, but uh, it pulled out, and he pulled this hair out of his nose, and it hurt a little bit, and it got infected and went through his brain. Three days, he's dead. Just that one little hair. He didn't get run over by a truck. He didn't get hit by the coronavirus. Not a heart attack. That little thing. Now, we underestimate the power of little sins. Little sins lead to big sins. And I'm preaching tonight about just some little things that get in our lives. And if we're not careful, they'll begin to uh, get more and more and more. And so the Bible said, uh, I, you know, I've wrestled with this thing for all these years. And I've heard people say, uh, you've got to beware of getting to the point where you think 
Ah, uh, well, I mean, we're all sinners. We can't quit sinning. So uh, I, I'm not really doing a whole lot uh, bad. So, and you allow some little sin in your heart. You're supposed to whip that thing. Uh, the Bible said, let not sin rule uh, have dominion over you. Don't rule over you. You're supposed to beat it up. You're supposed to mortify, kill, kill, mortify uh, the, the members of your body, the deeds of this flesh. So let's take a few of these little foxes tonight. And the first one I'm going to mention is division. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians uh, that we're not supposed to have division. Uh, he said, I hear that there be divisions among you. I mean, just pat on this thing, Caleb. And uh, he, we get divisions in the church. You know, uh, uh, he, he didn't say, I heard that there's liquor among you. Uh, he didn't say, uh, I wrote to you, Corinthians, and I heard there's meth in, in the choir. I heard there's, there's uh, cocaine. Uh, in the Sunday school class. Now, and he didn't say that. He said, I heard there's division among you. You know, if the devil get us divided and arguing with each other, he's got his foot in the door. You know that. Yeah. That's the same way with your house. Husband and wife. Division. 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 You can get division on doctrine. One of the boys talking to me about it the other night. They said, uh, Brother Danny, so-and-so don't like so-and-so, and so-and-so don't like so-and-so, and uh, Brother Brandon was mentioned to me about a minute, minute ago about a preacher friend of ours that we know uh, that don't live in this state at all. And uh, a lot of preachers are attacking him on those books and attacking him. And it's every time you turn around, preachers are nitpicking and picking at each other. And the devil is sitting back laughing his head off. And I'm going to tell you something tonight, people. We all ain't going to agree on everything. If any two people agree on every single thing, one of them is unnecessary. Uh, God give you a brain. We're never going to see everything exactly alike. But we better, we better watch this little fox of, of, of nitpicking. Uh, years ago up in Marion, we had like uh, 20 young preachers. And uh, uh, young preachers go through stages. And they got into this stage where they was, uh, uh, thought, every one of them thought they knew it all. And uh, they'd discover some doctrine. And they'd come in. And I'd see them when I come in. I don't know if you remember that or not, but there'd be a little group over here, and they said, and they and there's there's arguing about uh, salvation and different dispensations, stuff like that. And really, that's a very complicated subject, and you can prove it all kinds of different ways and argue it all day long. And uh, uh, they how that they bring the Old Testament sacrifice and stuff like that. How that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord before the law, and all, then the millennium, and ain't gonna be saved by faith in the millennium. He's sitting there on the throne. Uh, you know, you can, you can get into all that kind of stuff. And I told them, I said, now, boys, don't argue about it. And they got, they get in the flesh. And they get mad at each other. And it got to hear a little group and hear a little group. And it's just like Paul said over there. Uh, some says I'm of Paul. Some says I'm of Silas. Some says I'm of this one. I'm of that one. And he said, you're all wrong. Every one of you. You might be right in your doctrine, but your heart ain't right. You better watch. Look, y'all, they, they ain't many of us. We're a minority big time. We can't be nitpicking each other apart and pick. I mean, it's okay to study. I study. I got I got my own opinion about a lot of things that I disagree with about a lot of the preachers. But buddy, I'm telling you what, we're fighting the devil. We're fighting for our families. We're fighting for our wives and our kids and, and the future of our country. And we're trying to get souls saved. Don't let division come in there and spoil the vine. Amen. I know, I know preachers right now, good, good, Bible-believing, independent Baptist preachers, and they're split off into about five or six different groups because of this little point and that little point and that little point. And, and neither one of them got nothing to do with nothing. None of them points have anything to do with salvation. None of them points they all believe the Bible. But the devil will get in you and make you nitpick, cause division about doctrine, about dress. Uh, now listen. You know what the Bible teaches? Well, I don't mention it a whole lot here. I don't get up and hammer about stuff like this. But you know, you're supposed to dress decent as a Christian. Especially, for heaven's sake, when you come to church. When you come to church, you ought to look like you are going to church. And why are you, why are you Sunday go to meeting clothes, brother? And I mean, dress well up for God. It's not we're trying to impress each other. We're not trying to impress each other or anybody else. We're just saying, brother, we are coming to worship God. We want to do our best. We want to feel our best. We want to look our best. Ladies look like a lady. Man looks like a man. I mean, you don't want to come. To, you don't want your kid to come to church uh, looking like a cheerleader dress up to here. And brother, the boy look like him and him for heaven's sake. A bunch of hoes and a bunch of uh, drug addicts. I mean, brother, uh, we all, don't let the little fox with a dress. Don't let him get on your diet. 
People puss. And man, nobody probably remembers this in here, but Cap. This guy come in, and I got talked into letting him come preach revival. And it turned into the biggest mess. You might remember about food. And this guy was on this diet, and he's on this uh, vegetable uh, fruit, vegetable fruit diet. And he had been, he had actually went to school up at Hammond, Indiana. That ain't, that ain't where he got it. He come out of there, and he was traveling around all over the country, preach it in churches. And, and he was just so happened that he's also selling juicers. Yeah. And uh, y'all remember that? Nothing, nothing personal. I don't even know whatever happened. Yeah, I liked him. I, uh, but he was selling these juicers. And, it, and the whole revival turned into this big deal of, are you going to get a juicer? Buddy, he showed us in the Bible where it's wrong to eat any kind of meat. He showed it in the Bible. And me and my family ain't eating no more meat. That's been 25 years ago. I wonder if we're still sticking to that. I never did quit. You know why? Because I got a Bible. But I'm not going to nickpick nobody about it. I, I was at church one time, and I didn't. They, they preached that all, all uh, organic vegetable fruit. And, and there's, there's people up there fussing at each other and getting mad over because one family bought a juicer and was going, you put all your fruit in this thing, and you grind it all up, and then you drink it. Uh, ain't, uh, I, I can't stand the thought of that, but they, and, and that's, that's their diet. And and I'd say and I, so I I taught the next Sunday night. I said, "Look, what does the Bible say a Christian's supposed to eat?" And I showed them what the Bible said. Did you know that anybody who tells you that you're supposed to be a vegetarian is led by the devil? They are, according to the Bible. That's a doctrine of demons. It is. But now, if you want to be a vegetarian, have at it. But don't judge somebody else that ain't. And don't judge each other and get division. Don't let that be a little fox that gets in and spoils your fellowship. I got friends of mine. I got a church in Florida where I used to preach and I didn't know it. And this guy wrote a book and it's about his vegetarian diet and, and no meat. And we went out to eat and I, I ordered shrimp and oysters. And uh, they, they taught you, they went by the Old Testament diet. You know, you're not supposed to eat catfish, shrimp, oysters, clam, scallop, anything that's not. Don't have fins like that. That's the Old Testament. Jewish diet. High order. I was sitting there just bragging on buying these shrimps. Good. I didn't know. And somebody got me on there. I said, Brother Danny, you know this church? I said, oh, my goodness. I didn't know. They didn't say nothing. They was nice about it. And I was too. But, uh, you know, people people fall out over stuff like that. that ain't nothing. That's just a little fox trying to wiggle his way in. Now, I'll be the first to admit that country ham and 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 real, real gravy and liver mush and bacon is not health food. Come on. I will admit that. I mean, my truth's the truth. Uh, but boy, I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I, I go, Billy Kelly said, he said, I, he said, when I die, he said, I want to bury me in a big old thing of gravy with a biscuit in both hands. And I'm just sopping when I'm going down. And you don't, don't fall out with stuff like that. I mean, we don't eat, right? You know we don't eat. Uh, you can't, you couldn't afford to eat the way they think you're supposed to. Uh, but you should be careful. You should be careful about that. And I'm not, this ain't a, a message on, on diet. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, little stuff like that will get in and cause you to break fellowship with each other. Division. Well, let me say another one. Discontent. Discontent. Now, you be careful. Listen to me, ladies, especially young teenagers, men. You better be careful if you're never happy, you're never satisfied, you're never thankful, you're ne no matter what happens, you're always mad or griping about something, that's a little fox. That is not the Holy Ghost making you think and act like that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, you say, well, I'm lonely, I'm lonely, I'm lonely, I'm lonely. Did you know I read that the average American, us in here tonight, meet more people in one day than most people did their whole life a hundred years ago. You know, a hundred years ago up in the mountains, Tennessee, around here, people lived their whole life and never get out of that little area. Boy, there was cars and stuff 150 years ago. They didn't have cars. And they just their little community. They might live and die and never see a thousand people. 
And you passed a thousand on the way down here tonight, probably. And see it just today, going in Walmart, going out. So uh, don't don't let the devil, don't let that little fox, don't let that little fox get in you and say, poor you, you're pitiful, and get to be discontented. The more, the more you get, the more you want. The more you want, the more you get. Uh, learn to be thankful for what you've got. Quit letting that little fox of, of discontent get in you. Uh, you know what you ought to do tonight? Make up your mind. Hey, hey here it is, 2024. We're going to get down to business. We're, gonna, we're not going to look at our phones during church. We're going we're gonna to pay attention. We're gonna get, I'm going to get this little fox of discontent out of my life. I'm going to be thankful for what God's done for me. Listen, if you've never done nothing else but save you, that'd be enough to shout about for a thousand years. And God been good. we got clothes on our back. we got food in our stomach. we got a car out there. we got a church to go to. Amen. Don't, don't let that little fox of discontent bother you. Well, I ain't got a boyfriend. Ah, oh, you'll be all right. Might be better. Might be better. You say, well, I just, I just need a job. Right, we'll pray for you one. I need a husband. We'll pray for you one. But don't be, be content with what, be content with what God's gave you. Yeah. Then I'll get into another one tonight. That's doubt. You know what sin is doubt? Jesus said in Matthew 14, 31, them disciples down there. Now listen to me. This, this, I'm preaching to myself. Jesus told his disciple one time, he said, wherefore didst thou doubt? Why? Here's Jesus asking him, why'd y'all doubt? Is there something wrong? Why the reason? And you know, as the children of Israel saw the Lord bring plagues on Pharaoh, they saw the Red Sea open up. And they saw, and they got out there in the desert, in the, in the wilderness, and began to doubt the Lord. Now, me and you will sit right here tonight, and we'll say, buddy, I'll tell you what, if I'd seen the Red Sea open up, I'd have never doubted. They did. That means doubt don't come as a result of what you ain't seen. Doubt comes as, as from sin. There's two things that make people doubt. Number one is sin in their heart, and the other one is not spending enough time in that book. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I'm telling you tonight, you don't let that little bit of uh, devilish doubt. And you say, well, I would go witnessing Saturday, but I, Lord, Brother Danny, I don't even know for sure if I'm even saving myself. I, I doubt it all the time. Now, it's okay, and it's normal for everybody to doubt once in a blue moon. Stuff like that. I've doubted the sun shining before, uh, but no, not more than two seconds. I mean, you know it is. I mean, it, it don't, but don't let that, that little fox of doubt ruin everything for you. Sin causes doubt. And I'm going to tell you something. You get rid of that sin in your life and root it out. Root it out. Root that sin out. Whatever it is, root it out. You said, Brother Danny, I did root it out. It come back. Root it out again. It's like a roundup. Spray the Holy Ghost on it and it'll die down. Spray the Holy Ghost on it, it'll die down. Spray the Holy Ghost on it, it'll die down. It's a never ending fight. Let me give you another one. Number four. Everybody listening? Despair. Despair. First, Second Corinthians 1 8 said, We despair, even of life. That's a complete loss of hope. To lose hope. And to feel like there's nothing you can do about your situation. And it's never going to change. And it's hopeless. And you get depressed. And I, I'm telling you, that ain't God making you feel like that. That's a devil and a little fox coming in saying, look, people, think about it now. Think about this. The devil pretty well knows. Well, most of us ain't going to get drunk this week. I hope there's nobody in here gets drunk this week. Surely not. I hope there's nobody in here that's going to do cocaine this week or flocka or something. I, I hope there's nobody in here. I hope there's nobody that doesn't go down of style. Eh? Uh, but I hope there's nobody in here uh, going to do meth this week. The devil's smart. Do you know what he'll do? The little foxes. Despair. Despair. Nothing's ever going to change. You're stuck like this the rest of your life. God don't even hear your prayer. See that little fox pulling your vine? You jump up and down and say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I'm going to heaven. Woo! If you say anything else, I'll shout some more. And he'll leave you alone. It's a fight, y'all. You got to shoot them things. Shoot them things. They got, they'll come in your life. We got 
you know, we got a lot of squirrels in my yard. We've always had, but we have a tremendous amount of squirrels in our yard the last few days. You know why that is? Well, Ethan goes and buys these big old bags of corn for deer and are out there, got two or three of them out there in my parking place at home, and they all got, them bags got little holes in them, and there's a pile of corn that big, two or three, and I don't care. I don't care. I like to see the squirrels. We're going to have some fat squirrels, I'll tell you that. I mean, they are chowing down on that corn. And every time we go out, they go running up through the woods. They're getting braver and braver. Frankie's going, he, he really, really won't shoot one. And he just he just got a BB gun, but Ethan's going to let him shoot his rifle. But uh, he's, he's got a BB gun. I said, Frankie, the only way you can kill a squirrel with a BB gun is you shoot him right in the eye. And I don't know if he can do that or not. He might. But anyway, I know that's animal cruelty. Put you in jail. Uh, but, uh, you spray to kill them precious roaches, you hypocrite. And... Uh, Anyway, uh, he said, we're, we're going to, I'm just messing with you, y'all. Get, get sense of humor. Where's your sense of humor? Amen. Uh, don't eat no chicken, you murderer. No chicken, you murderer. You know how they kill them precious chickens. I don't think you ought to be mean to animals. I don't, I, don't, I don't even chew animals no more. I used to when I was young. But anyway, them squirrels are chowing down on that stuff. And them little foxes, if you let them, I mean, if you let them, they'll eat up your life. Little foxes. And you'll say, well, but Danny, I go to church every Sunday. I don't drink. I try to live right. I, I, don't, I don't do nothing real bad. Them little foxes that spoil your vine. That's right. Now, let me give you another one. Duty. Duty. All these begin with D, so you can remember them. Duty. Jesus said in Luke 17, 10, they have done that. What they, did, they said they have done that which is our duty to do. It is a sin not to do your duty. Do right. Pay your bills. Be honest. I heard Ed Blue preach the uh, other day, and he's saying something about back in the old days. And I remember this myself. Some of y'all might remember this. Back in the old days, we had little country, local-owned stores in our neighborhood. My Uncle Jack owned one there in Marion uh, for years. Or Nebo, actually. Uh, uh, years. And what they do, when I first got my license, now, some of y'all might remember this. My daddy had a charge account at my uncle's store. And everybody in Nebo had a charge account. And they'd go by there and fill your car up with gas, and they'd just write it down. Uh, here, Danny got $8 worth of gas, fill his car up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. Good old days. Uh, Danny got uh, $7.59 worth of gas. Uh, they, uh, and... At the end of the month, Daddy, when Daddy got paid every two weeks, he'd go down there and pay his bill. Anybody else ever do that or seen that done when you was growing up? Okay. Well, if you, well Ed said he was pastor in a little church one time. He said, call, and he noticed, uh, he said he'd go down to this man's store. This old man run a little old country general store. He'd go down there and talk to that man. And he said, uh, he said, I'm about you to come to church. He said, he cussed. He started blankety blank. He said, I'll never, you'll never catch me. I'll never step foot. He said, what in the world's wrong with you, man? What has the church done to you? He said, come here a minute, preacher. He took him back there in the back. He pulled up. They'd have a little box like a shoe box. And they have all these little, little tablets about that thick with everybody's name on them. He said, you see all them names right there? He said, every one of them goes to your church. He said, he said, pull out another little box. He said, you see these names right here? He said, them three tablets right there is the three biggest bootleggers in this county. He said, I can count on it like clockwork. Friday evening come, them bootleggers will be here and pay their bills. He said, your church members? He said, they, some of them's here three, a month overdue. Here's some of them overdue. He said, they'll ride by here. And act like you're at the sun in their eyes. Well, because they're sitting out here on a drink case. And act like the sun's on the other side. And so they don't want to. He said, I ain't never. And listen, if there's anything that will ruin your testimony out there in the world, it's not paying people when you owe money. You better pay bills. You better just do right. You better be honest. For all you that owe me money, come on. I don't know anybody in here. I, I really don't mind. But uh, now, listen, that's your duty. That's just your duty. The devil 
Uh, that little fox will get in there. I mean, it's our duty to uh, pay our tithe. It's our duty. We know nothing special. People say, well, I go to church every time the door. That's a privilege. That's our duty. You ain't done God a favor by showing up in here on Sunday morning. That's our duty to me. We need to get back to some old-time dedication and, and fulfilling our, our responsibility as a Christian. Look, if you if you hold any kind of a job in this church, uh, if you're a Sunday school teacher, if you're a deacon, if you're a, a anything like this, it, it ought to be clockwork. That you walk through that door when them doors are open. Y'all not just lay out of church for every little old reason. I mean, if you're sick, if you're sick or you're gone on vacation once in a while, I understand that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm telling you, brother, there's no excuse for a Christian. Just say, you know what? I just don't think I'll go. It's your duty. We have a church. We're trying to reach America, Morganton, North Carolina. It's our duty to do that. Duty. Duty to witness. Duty to all this stuff. But I will say this last one. I'm through. Defile. Jude said, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. What that verse said was, you don't have to actually go out and commit an act. You, you dream filthy dreams and it defiles you. I, I, I ain't going to get into a big long thing about dreams. I've had people ask me over the years. I preached whole sermon on, on, online. If you want to get it, just look up Danny Castle Dreams. They'll give you the whole Bible. The whole Bible, what the Bible says about dreams. There's three places dreams come from. One is God. God gives people dreams. That's totally been in the Bible. Two is a multitude of business. You just get your head, you're in a lot of, you've just been so busy and got a lot on your mind, and you, and it, you dream crazy stuff at night. And then three, from the devil. And one in three places. And they think, will defile the flesh. The Bible said in Titus chapter 1 and verse 15, their mind and conscience is defiled. Now, I, I, I don't, you say, well, we in control of our dreams. That, that is true. That is true. But you are in control of what you let come in you that might inspire a wicked dream. Look up here now. I didn't say it's time to pray. I know this gets down to embarrassing level for some of y'all. But those, that's a little fox. See, some people think, some people think it don't really matter what I think about as long as I don't go out and do uh -uh. Little foxes grow up and turn into big foxes. Hey, ever, ever been? So, you know, Bob, I think Bob Jones Sr. went and visited a prison one time, and he said, every man I met in prison, he said, behind every ruined life, there's a long process of wicked thinking. You sit around and think about it. You sit around and think about it. You sit around and think. You better learn how to control your thoughts. You say, well, Brother Danny, I tried my best. I still have I get it. I get it. I understand. I know our flesh is wicked. Mine is. Yours is. All of us is there. We all are. We're all a bunch of, uh, we're, we're just nothing. We're just wicked without the Lord's touch on. I'm telling you, you better watch. You better keep that little fox out. out. You, better, you better raise your kids right. You better do right yourself. We get up here and scream and holler. And every preacher that I know comes in here and says, don't look at bad things on your phone. Don't look at bad things on your phone. Don't look at bad things on your phone. But we are serious. Don't look at bad things on your phone. You think because you don't go all the way that it's all right for you to watch. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Some, some. I don't even know what's borderline. Or maybe the uh, cheerleaders on a professional football get out there and twist around like a bunch of harlots. Maybe you think, that's all right. Well, I ain't watching pornography, Brother Danny. I sure, yeah. That's a little fox. That's a little fox. I know it's old-fashioned. So is cornbread. And it's still good. Yeah. All God people say it. Yeah. That's right, but you better say amen. I'm telling you, brother, that them little foxes full of iron. And by the way, what I'm saying is, I say it a lot. And some of you parents, I'm telling you, some of you parents, better listen. You better keep your, you better keep them tab on them kids' phones. It is a mistake to trust any teenager with unlimited access to a phone. It's a mistake. Brother Danny, I know you say that, but my kids, no, no. They're flesh. They're flesh. And every wicked, perverted 
girl out there that's went into a wicked lifestyle, every boy that's went out there and done something wicked, started out with just some little fox. Little fox. I ain't making too big a deal out of it. Monitor your kid's phone or take it away from them. You better check the room once in a while. Little devils will have nothing you don't know about. That's right. Amen. Oh, Brother Danny, we got good kids. I know we do. We got some wonderful kids. We got teenagers sitting on the front row. We got teenagers going bus route every Saturday. We got teenagers that love the Lord. Raise their hand. We got teenagers. If you said go to Disney World for a week or go to camp, it, it wouldn't even be a contest. And I thank God we do have them. But they're still flesh and they still got curiosity and they still got wickedness inside them. It's the devil. All it takes is something little. Amen. It's them little foxes. They're not going to go to a strip club. That little fox. Yeah. Turn you into a pervert, you idiot. Right. It'll do it. Yeah. It'll do it. Yeah. I ain't joking. I'm not joking around. Amen. Every serial killer in prison tonight start out with that little, right. with that little fox. Amen. And by the way, that goes for parents too. You say, well, who's going to check my phone? Your wife. Your husband, any 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 married person in here ought to be able to hand your mate your phone and say you can look at anything I've seen lately. I know you, you'll be you'll go to the restroom in a race before you get home tonight because you're facing your lap. You just remember this, buddy. The Lord's looking, and you better remember something else. That little fox. You know what's the leading cause of death in, in America in 2023? I read this in 2023, cancer killed 8 million people in 2023 in this country. That's horrible. 8 million. That's how many people there are in North Carolina. The leading cause of death in America in 2023 was abortion. 44 million. Five times as many people as there is in North Carolina. Got killed by abortion rate. 44 million. 44 million. I said 44 million. They some countries don't have that many people. You know how that got started? Some girl got flirted with by some boy. And he says, Wow, you know, yeah, yeah, you know. Flirting around, flirting around, flirting around. Little fox. One thing led to another. One thing led to another. Led to an unwanted pregnancy. And most of the time, they'll say, hey, I don't want it. I don't want it. And who would have thought that girl would have wound up scarring her body, scarring her life, scarring, ruining a, a, what she wanted to save for marriage, murdering her own baby, all because of that little fox she was talking to at school. I'll tell you. Brother Danny, don't you know that the ladies group that I meet at work, and they would think I was terrible if I, if I monitored my kid's phone or worse, not even let them have a phone. I don't even, I'm not even convinced all these little kids need a phone at all. There might be a point where you can write down, I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to raise your kids for you. I'm not. I got plenty to do them all. But if nowadays you say, my kid ain't getting a phone until this, 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 this. Other people look at you like you're some kind of religious fanatic and you're crazy. Let me tell you about a, a woman who said, uh, no phones. Her name is Kelly Clarkson. I don't know nothing about Kelly Clarkson. I guess she's a singer, a country singer, maybe, something like that. I wouldn't know one of her songs if you played it right now. I don't want to. Kelly Clarkson said none of her kids are allowed to be on social media. Kelly Clarkson. I doubt seriously if Kelly Clarkson is reading the whole King James Bible through this year. I doubt she might. I doubt seriously if Kelly Clarkson goes to an old-fashioned Bible-preaching, hellfire, damnation church, and Kelly Clarkson said, my kids ain't allowed to be on social media. And, and her husband, I, I, they got divorced, and she said they stayed with her husband four nights a month, every Friday night, I'm assuming. And she said that, and her daughter said, but what about when we're at daddy's? And she said, well, that's, that's between you and your daddy, but while you're under my roof, you ain't going to do it. And her daddy is backing up Kelly, saying, I agree with you. Don't that 
make y'all feel like maybe you need to jerk up on it a little bit? Amen. Here we are in a Bible preaching church and we just let them, there ain't no telling what some of these kids in here look at. Amen. It's a little fox that'll destroy you. I'll tell you something, buddy. Madonna, a few years ago, I don't know now, they're growing up a little bit now, would not let her kids have a TV, watch TV. I said, in case you didn't hear, Madonna, her, her favorite two songs are like a prayer and like a virgin, two subjects she knows nothing about. And her kids are not allowed to watch TV. Listen, people, when Madonna is our role and teaching us how morals for our kids, you're in bad shape. When you have to get a lesson on being a parent from Madonna, son, you, you scrape the bottom. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. Some of you sit right here tonight. Oh, I go to buy, I go to Shining Light. Brother Danny, my preacher, he busts it wide open. We believe the King James Bible. I'm right with God. Woo! We ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah, you better watch them little foxes sneak in. And them little foxes grow up and become big foxes. Kids ain't got no business. I don't know how to do this. Kelly's got got on Ethan's phone, I guess, where she she keep up with what, and I mean, he'd be 20 years old next week. Oh, he's 20, Brother Danny, don't you think it? Why don't you call up Kelly Clarkson and ask her what she thinks about it? Maybe she can mentor you a little bit. Oh, Brother Danny, I can't believe yeah, you'll, I'll, you'll, one of these days when you meet me in my office, and you'll say, look what happened. Uh, we never believed this would happen. We've had him at church every Sunday. There you go. That little fox come in while you wasn't paying attention. Listen, y'all. We, we ain't no game here. We had this morning, but some of y'all know, a, a kid right back there in the lobby. Honest to goodness was manifesting something. You know, you know some kind of drug or a demonic, I mean, a kid that high, kicking walls, slinging that. Clawed his face, showing them scars you got on the side of your face, son. That's not normal, kid that high. We are battling demonic power when we come in here. You can't afford to pet that little sin. Maybe you're secretly lusting after somebody. You know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. But because you hadn't said anything to them and because you're not done anything about it, you just think, well, everybody sins and you just sit around and you just like to think about it. Forget that out. But Danny, we can't be... I know that. I know that. I know that. But that little fox is what eventually grows into a big fox. If we're going to fight the battle in 2024, we got to get rid of them little foxes, y'all. It's a little fox. Let's stand. Luca, come up here and play something right quick. Every head's bowed, never eye closed. Truth be told, there's not a person in here tonight. Don't need to be on our face. Truth be told. Thank God. Help me not to let them little foxes in my life. Come on, others coming. Come on, ain't nothing to be embarrassed about. Come on, daddies, mamas, sons. Daughters, teenagers. Amen. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Lord, I'm in the altar this, this evening. I need it bad as anybody else. This is our invitation tonight. We're not going to sing. We're just going to pray for me. Maybe you're just going to slide out of your seat and say, Lord, I'm going to get that sin out of my heart. I don't want to wind up being no wicked pervert. I don't want to do it, Lord. God, get that sin out of me. God, get that sin out of me. God, get it out of me. Brother Danny, that's unreasonable. Well, why did God tell us to do it then? Lord ain't going to tell you to do something that's unreasonable. He ain't going to tell you. He wants to help you. The more you keep sin out of your life, the better off you'll be, I'm telling you. The more you get rid of sin in your heart, the better off your life will be. Amen. Amen. You there at home, watching online, bow your head, say, God, 
I know we're living in a wicked, wicked, perverse generation. I know that. I know that. You ain't telling me nothing. It's wicked as hell all over this world. God help us tonight to keep our vessels clean. Mortify our members which are both here. Get right with God here tonight. Oh, you say, Brother Danny, I don't watch nothing wicked on my phone, but uh, some of that stuff's a little edgy, though. A little edge, a little fox. Might not be no big giant fox or a bear or a lion. It can be just a little fox. A little on the edge there. A little suggestive. A little dirty, dirty jokes here and there. Talking it wicked. Talking wicked. Acting wicked. Thinking wicked. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, taking heed toward his word. Father, do what ought to be done in our life. Lord, we are just a bunch of sinners saved by grace. Wash us in the blood here tonight. Cleanse our mind, our heart, our thoughts, our lives. Lord, that we our vessels be clean and right. Help us not to pet, to pamper, or to allow any little fox of sin to be in our lives. Help us to fight it. Lord, shoot them with a gospel gun. Have you in our hearts, Lord. God, do what ought to be done in our lives. Help us, oh Lord, we pray. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Some still praying tonight. Some still praying tonight. Yes, thank God. Amen. 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 Jesus said, Now you're clean through the word which I've spoken to you. Leave the phone off a while and just read the Bible. That's why I encourage you to read the Bible. It cleans you. It washes you while you're reading it. You're clean by the word. The word of God will like a brush and scrub you on the inside. I know, I've been doing this a long time, y'all. The only way you can stay right with God is stay in this right here. And don't let no little sin get into your heart because little sin turns into big sin. All right. All right. All hearts clear? All right. Let's go out of here with a new determination. Live for the Lord this week. Serve Him. Be here Wednesday night. Be in your place. Be here. Do right. Serve God. He'll bless you. Everybody be here Wednesday night. Bring your Bible. You're going to need it. We're going to get in the book. So, uh, all right, clear. Now, listen. Next Sunday night, we're going to have a youth youth service. Maybe I should have saved this till then. But I, I believe that's what the Lord wanted me to preach tonight for us. And all these young people will be here next Wednesday night. What I said to our men to go about us battling spiritual wickedness, it, we're, hit, we're, we're hitting it, y'all. It's hitting us. There's demonic powers working in here this morning. I ain't trying to sound like a TV preacher. I it It... It gets under my nerves a little bit. We better not be playing around. We better put on the whole armor of God. We're in a battle. So, uh, be here Wednesday night, Saturday morning. We're going visiting. We're soldiers in God's army going out Saturday morning to fight the battles of the Lord. Just like David and his men went out and fought, that's what we're doing Saturday morning. And then uh, uh, next Sunday night, youth service, Sweetheart Banquet's coming up here in just a few weeks. And it's youth rally mode from then on. We're going to be doing fasting. Uh, maybe a little bit different than what we have been the last few years. Everybody be praying about that. Order that book if you can. Fast Your Way to Help by J. Earl Smith. You say, I don't order that. It might, it might make you live longer. And help healthier and holier. Amen. We're digging our graves with a spoon, y'all. Americans are. That's right. And so, uh, order that book. Read it. I'd strongly recommend it. It'll help you live right. All right. All hearts and minds clear. Amen. All right. Let's be dismissed with prayer. Everybody, uh, everybody, let's just go and, and fellowship before you go. And be friendly. It's still early. Be careful tomorrow. It ain't going to start snowing until about 11 or 12, something like that. If that was hitting in the middle of the night, now we'd get it. But it's hitting in the warm part of the day, so we probably won't. But anyway, be careful. Amen. All right, let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. Uh, pray for these people sitting on the front row, their phones falling out of their pockets. I, I'm just kidding. I don't even know who it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Amen. All right, ready? Brother Darren, you dismiss him.